are already done with adding, subtracting, and multiplying functions, now let's proceed to our new topic, which will be division of function. So in this video, we will study how to divide two or more given functions. Before we proceed to division of functions, let us first review our previous topic, which is about the addition, subtraction, and multiplication of two or more functions. So we have here given function of x is equal to 2x minus 1 and g of x is equal to 1 minus x. So question is first find f plus g of x. So in our first example, we see here the, the plus sign. So it indicates that we have to perform the operation which is addition. So f plus g of x is same as f of x plus the g of x. So from this point, we have to substitute the given 2x minus 1 and 1 minus x. Since the value of the function of f of x is 2x minus 1, so we will put it here, 2x minus 1. Then put in a parenthesis, then copy the plus sign. Next is the g of x, which is 1 minus x. So we have 1 minus x. From this point, we have to group the terms according to variables for you to not be confused in combining terms later. So group the terms according to variables since we have the x variable here 2x and x. So we will group them. So we have 2x then minus x copy the sign negative then we have negative 1 and we have positive 1 so we have to combine 2x minus x so 2x minus x or 2x minus 1x so the answer is x then negative 1 plus 1 the answer here is 0 so you don't have to write 0 so the final answer is f plus g of x is equal to x. Okay, next is we have letter B, f minus g of x. So we will expand this one. We have f of x minus g of x. So we have here our f of x is 2x minus 1. And our g of x is 1 minus x. Okay, next step. Here in addition of function, there is no problem in combining terms because the sign here is positive. However, in subtracting functions, we have to distribute the negative sign to this quantity because it's negative. So the terms here, the sign of the terms here will be affected. So we will distribute the negative sign to this quantity. So let's do it. So we have 2x minus 1. So negative times positive 1, we have negative 1. The negative times negative x, we have positive x. Okay, so we already distributed a negative sign. Next is, for you to not be confused, okay, let us... Group the terms according to variables. So we have x, x, so 2x plus x because the sign is positive. Next is negative 1 minus 1. So combine like terms. Like terms here we have 2x plus x. So answer is 3x. Then this one, negative 1 minus 1, the answer is negative 2. So our answer for f minus g of x is equal to 3x minus 2. Let us see, we have f times g of x. We can have it f of x times g of x. Or we can write here that sign. So this denotes multiplication. So our f of x is 2x minus 1. We will multiply it by our g of x, which is 1 minus x. Now, in multiplying this 1, we will multiply this quantity to each of the term in this quantity. 
So we will write it 2x minus 1. First, we will multiply it 2, 1. Then copy the sign negative. So this is the sign negative. Then write 2x minus 1 times x. So here, 2x minus 1 times 1, we have here. Then 2x minus 1 times x, we have here. Then, let us distribute. So 2x times 1, we have 2x. Negative 1 times 1, we have negative 1. Then put it in a parenthesis. Minus, again parenthesis, 2x times x, we have 2x squared. The negative 1 times 1, we have negative x. Okay, in this step, we have negative sign at the center. Therefore, we will distribute this sign to all the terms here in this quantity. Okay, so 2x minus 1. So negative times positive 2x squared, we have negative 2x squared and again negative times negative x we have positive x so we will arrange the terms according to their exponents so the highest exponents we have 2 so we, we will write it here the first so negative 2x squared then next is we have 2x and x plus 2x y y plus it's because the sign of 2x here is positive then plus x then lastly we have negative one as constant then we have to combine like terms so similar terms here we have 2x and x so our answer is negative 2x squared then 2x plus x we have 3x minus 1 now if you got a little problem in using this way here in multiplying two functions you can have your very familiar way, which is the ice cream method or the foil method. I know that you're very familiar with the foil method. Okay, so foil method, you can have this. So we have 2x minus 1 times 1 minus x. So f stands for first or first terms. So we have first terms, 2x and 1. O for outer. We have outer terms, this. For I, inner, this one, and L for last. So we will solve 2x times 1, we have 2x. Negative 1 times negative x, we have positive x. For our outer, 2x times negative x, we have negative 2x squared. And for negative 1 times positive 1, we have negative 1. So here our terms, we will combine this one, 2x plus x, so answer is 3x, okay. Then we will write this as first term, so negative 2x squared, next we have positive 3x, and lastly we have negative 1, so it's just the same, so 2x squared plus 3x minus 1. So the answer for f times g of x is equal to negative 2x squared plus 3x minus 1. Let's have division of function. Adding, subtracting, and multiplying two or more functions together will result to another function. However, dividing two functions together will result in another function if the denominator or the divisor is not zero. So here we have f and g, which are functions that are defined by a real number x. So the quotient of this function is defined by f of x over g of x, in which g of x, the denominator or the divisor, is not equal to 0. So why is it that our denominator or our divisor should not be equal to 0? It is because... If our denominator is 0 here, this will be undefined. So there is a restriction in the denominator. So in dividing two function, we must determine the restriction in the denominator. So let us solve this one. We have f of x 
we have 2x minus 1 over g of x, which is 1 minus x. Now first, we must simplify this function if it can be simplified further. However, if it is already in the simplest form, we just have to get the restriction in the denominator. So 2x minus 1 over 1 minus x is already in its simplest form because there are no terms or quantities or expressions that can be cancelled here. So, therefore, we must already proceed to getting the restriction in the denominator of this function. So we have <coughs> 1 minus x. So what value in the x that will make our denominator 0? Okay. The value that will make the denominator 0 is positive 1. Why? Because if our x is 1, then we subtract it from 1, the answer is 0. So 1 minus 1 is 0. However, if it is confusing to you to just get it mentally, you have the other way, which is this one. You have to equate the denominator to 0. We have 1 minus x is equal to 0. So, equate to 0. The denominator to 0. So, we have here 1 minus x is equal to 0. In order for us to get the x, of course, we will transpose negative x to the other side. So, the term that will be left here in the left side is 1 and negative x will become positive x. So the restriction in the denominator is positive 1. So our final answer, we can write it this way. f over g of x is equal to 2x minus 1 over 1 minus x, wherein x should not be equal to 1. So this is our final answer. Next example, we have here given function of x is equal to x squared minus 4, h of x is equal to x squared plus 5x minus 14, and g of x is equal to x minus 2. So first question, find h over g of x. So if we expand it, we have h of x over g of x. So we will substitute h of x, we have x squared plus 5x minus 14. Next is, we have g of x, which is x minus 2. So we already substituted the given functions here. So we will check if this function is already in simplest form by getting the factors of our numerator because this is a quadratic function. So we can get the factors. Now, in getting the factors of x squared plus 5x minus 14, the simplest way is to think two numbers that are factors of negative 14 in which if you add, the result is positive 5. We have negative 7 and 2 or we have negative 2 and 7. Among this set of factors, which of them is when you add the result is 5. So let's try negative 7 plus 2 answer is negative 5. Negative 2 plus 7 answer is positive 5. Therefore, we will take these factors. So we can write x minus 2 and x plus 7. You take the sign negative and positive. So that is x minus 2 and x plus 7. Then, copy x minus 2. Now here, we have expressions that are cancelable in both our numerator and denominator. We have x minus 2. So we can cancel that one. x minus 2 and x minus 2. So it will become positive 1. So you don't need to write positive 1 anymore. So the answer is x plus 
7. Since our final answer is x plus 7 and we don't have denominator in our final answer, do we need still to get the restriction of this function? Yes, we need to get the restriction by using this one. Okay. So we can write x is equal to what value? So we will equate the denominator to 0. So x minus 2 is equal to 0. Transpose negative 2 for us to get the x. So x negative 2 will become positive 2. Therefore, the restriction is positive 2. Okay. So we will write here x is not equal to positive 2. So our answer is h over g of x is equal to x plus 7 when x is not equal to 2. If our x is 2, so 2 minus 2, our denominator will become 0 and that will be undefined. So that's why we have our restriction positive 2 in the denominator. Next example, we have f divided by h of x. So we will expand. We have f of x over h of x. So next step, substitute our f of x is x squared minus 4 over our h of x is x squared plus 5x minus 14. Next step is to check if it is already in the simplest form by getting the factors of both the numerator and the denominator because these are both quadratic functions. So they have factors. So factors of x squared minus 4, since this is sum and difference, we can just have it directly as x plus 2 and x minus 2. It is because if we multiply x plus 2 by x minus 2, the result is x squared minus 4. Next is the factors of x squared plus 5x minus 14. I will repeat. In finding the factors of x squared plus 5x minus 14, the simple way is just to find factors of negative 14 in which if you add the result is positive 5. So factors of negative 14, we have negative 7, 2, negative 2, 7. We will try to add, so negative 7. Plus 2, answer is negative 5. Negative 2 plus 7, answer is positive 5. So we will go for this factor. So first is x minus 2. Next is x plus 7. So we will write it here. x minus 2 and x plus 7. Then check if there are similar expressions in both the numerator and the denominator to be cancelled. So we have x minus 2 and x minus 2. So we will cancel this one. It will result to positive 1 and you don't need to write 1 here because that's already understandable. So the remaining expressions we have x plus 2 over x plus 7. In finding the restriction in the denominator, we will base from this. Our denominators are x minus 2 and x plus 7. So again, we will equate each of the expression to 0. So x minus 2 is equal to 0 and x plus 7 is equal to 0. So transpose negative 2, answer is positive 2. Transpose positive 7, answer is negative 7. Therefore, we have two restrictions in the denominator. We have 2 and negative 7. It is because if we substitute 2 here, the answer will be 0. Why? Because 2 minus 2 is 0. And 0 multiplied by any number is equal to 0 automatically. And if we also have negative 7 here, negative 7 plus 7, the answer is 0. And 0 times any number is 0. So our final answer is f over h of x is equal to x plus 2 over x plus 7, wherein x is not equal to 2 and negative 7. Let's have this example. f plus g all over h of x. 
So in this example, so in this problem, we have to combine addition and division of function. So we will expand to this one. So f of x plus g of x over h of x. Next, we will substitute. So our f of x is x squared minus 4. And our g of x is x minus 2 over our h of x is x squared plus 5x minus 14. First thing to do is, of course, to add the two functions x squared minus 4. If we distribute the positive sign, we have positive times positive x positive x, positive times negative 2, the answer is negative 2, over x squared plus 5x minus 14. Now in our numerator, we can combine negative 4 and negative 2. So we will combine it first. We have x squared plus x negative 4 minus 2 answer is negative 6 over x squared plus 5x minus 14 next is we will check if this function is already in its simplest form so what we will do is we will find the factors of both the numerator and the denominator because they are quadratic functions the factors of x squared plus x minus 6 you have to find the factors of negative 6 in which if you add the result is positive 1 because there is 1 here. The possible factors are negative 3 and 2 and negative 2 and 3. Now among these two sets of factors, which of them is when you add the result is positive 1? So negative 3 plus 2, answer is negative 1. Negative plus 3, the answer is positive 1. So we will have these factors of x squared plus x minus 6. So we have x minus 2 and x plus 3. Next is the factors of x squared plus 5x minus 14. So in our discussion, the factors of x squared plus 5x minus 14 is we have x minus 2 and x plus 7. So check if there are expressions that are cancelable. So we have x minus 2, cancel, cancel, that will become 1. So the remaining expressions are x plus 3 and x plus 7. Now again, we will base our restriction in this part not in this part. So we have here two restrictions in the denominator because our denominator is quadratic. Therefore, we have two values that are restricted in the denominator. So we have x minus 2 and x plus 7. So if we transpose it one by one, so our restriction is x is not equal to transpose negative 2 that will become positive 2 and positive 7, negative 7. So our final answer is x plus 3 over x plus 7 in which x is not equal to 2 and negative 7. So that's all for today. Keep safe everyone. Bye!